the Aerospace Force of the Army of the Guardians of the Islamic Revolution AFAGIR, known in the United States as the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Force IRGCAF, is the Air Force within the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC. Parallel to the regular Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force IRIAF, the regular air branch of the Armed Forces of the Islamic Republic of Iran AFIRI, the Revolutionary Guards have their own air force. It shares facilities with the IRIAF. Its personnel size is unknown to the Federation of American Scientists. Topic: Aviation Forces. Most American public sources disagree and argue on which aircraft are operated by the AFAGIR. The Washington Institute for Near East Policy said in 2005 that T he backbone of the IRGCAF consists of 10 Su-25 Frogfoot attack aircraft including 7 flown from Iraq to Iran during the 1991 Gulf War kept airworthy with the help of Georgian technicians and around 40 EMB 312 Tucanos the Washington Institute also said that the IRGCAF maintained 30 Y-12 and Dassault Falcon 20 light transports, as well as MFI-17 Mushshak and Super Mushshak trainers and locally built Ababal and Mohajer reconnaissance unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. .The AFAGIR also operates a sizable rotary wing force consisting of around 20 m 171 helicopters for transport and armed assault roles, and a large transport force out of Shiraz, equipped with around 15 X Iraqi Il 76s, originally operated by the IRIAF, and 12 and 74 minus 200 Takas transports. Scramble backs up this picture in general, reporting an 74s, and 14s, and Su-25 kS at Tehran Marabad, Chengdu F-7 MS at Zahedan while saying that MFI-17s were often reported at Zahedan incorrectly, and IL-76 AEW variants at Shiraz Shahid Dasthabe International Airport, while saying that they might be based at Maribad. Scramble also said that an unknown number of new Su 25s were delivered in 2003. However, other, later writings make no mention of Su 25s or IL 76s. Anthony Cordesman of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, writing in August 2007, said only the AFAGIR may operate Iran's 10 EMB-312 Tucanos", and that it "...seems to operate many of Iran's 45 PC-7 training aircraft", as well as Pakistani-built training aircraft at a school near Mushshak. But this school may be run by the regular Air Force. He also specifically said that reports of the Revolutionary Guards operating F 7s did not seem to be correct. Cordesman also noted claims of the AFAGIR building gliders for use in unconventional warfare, saying that they would be unsuitable delivery platforms, but could at least carry a small number of weapons. However the attached reference was a 1996 Reuters report, making the sources for such assertions extremely thin. 
Finally, the IISS Military Balance 2007 makes no mention of aircraft at all, referring only to the Shahab 1, 2, and 3 missiles. In October 2009, it was announced that its name has been changed from IRGC Air Force to IRGC Aerospace Force. In February 2014, Jane's announced that the Barana missile system had been tested. This system is a laser-guided air-to-surface missile which releases submunitions, new generation of long-range ballistic missiles carrying multiple re-entry vehicle MIRV payloads. The UN panel of experts identified it as a variant of the Shahab and questioned its alleged multiple re- entry vehicle capability, suggesting instead that it carried sub-munitions, the Bina missile, which can be carried aloft and is able to be ground-launched from a rail car, was also revealed at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Current aircraft Topic: Missile forces. The AFAGIR controls Iran's strategic missile forces. In August 2013, Ahmad Vahidi, former Defense Minister of Iran, said that his country is ranked sixth in the world in missile production. It is claimed to operate several thousand short- and medium-range mobile ballistic missiles, including the Shahab-3, 3B with a range of up to 2,100 km, which is the mainstay of Iran's strategic deterrent. This puts even NATO members Greece, Bulgaria and Romania within striking range, if fired from western Iran. If Iran ever produces nuclear weapons, the AFAGIR is likely to control them. Iran says that it has no intention of producing nuclear weapons. Despite earlier routes, the Iranian military industry started the missile development program in earnest during Iran's long and costly war with Iraq. At times, throughout the war Iran found that it could not strike certain Iraqi facilities or targets with its own forces. This resulted in an ambitious missile development program that is still continuing. Today, Iran is developing space launch vehicles and sophisticated medium-range ballistic missiles. Iran's ballistic missiles possess the capability to deliver a variety of conventional high explosive and submunition, as well as MIRVs. Iran's achievements in missile development has been called impressive by IISS. In May 2013, Iran's Ministry of Defense and Logistics delivered a massive number of missile TELs to IRGCAF. Iranian television footage showed at least 26 TELs lined up in two rows for the event, which marked their purported delivery to the Islamic Revolution Guards Corps IRGC Aerospace Force, which operates the country's ballistic ballistic missiles according to the report by IHS Jains any Iranian long range intermediate range ballistic missile or intercontinental ballistic missile would require an extraordinarily effective guidance system and level of reliability to have any real lethality with conventional warheads even if it could be equipped with a functional GPS guidance platform it would probably require nuclear warheads in order to compensate for critical problems in accuracy, reliability, and warhead lethality. <laughs> Short-range missiles <laughs> Solid fuel program 
The foundations for this were laid with the Oghab and Shahin II missiles. These would lead the way for a number of other rocket artillery systems including Farge, Nazit, and Zelzal. The initial effort in this area relied heavily on technical help from the People's Republic of China in the form of assembly and manufacturing contracts during 1991 and 1992. Iran was quick to surpass the Chinese level of assistance and became self-sufficient. Bina Bina is a laser-guided dual-capability short-range surface-to-surface and air-to-surface missile. It appears to be an AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile with a semi-active laser SAL seeker fitted to its nose. Brigadier General Hossein Deccan said the ballistic missile had radar-evading capabilities. The new generation of long-range ground-to-ground ballistic missile with a fragmentation warhead and the laser-guided air-to-surface and surface-to-surface -surface missile dubbed Bina Insightful have been successfully test-fired. The Bina missile is capable of striking important targets such as bridges, tanks and enemy command centers with great precision. Topic. Liquid fuel program After the war, Iran's experience of liquid fuel missiles had purely focused on the reverse engineering of Scud B missiles. However, with the post war reorganization, the focus of the effort quickly changed and focused on assembly and maintenance. A domestic version of the Scud B, known as Shahab 1, was developed and manufactured. This led to its successor, the Shahab 2, a variant of the Scud C with a range of 500 to 700 km, and finally the Shahab 3. Since the end of the war, Iran has consistently attempted to recruit foreign help, as well as its large and highly qualified expatriate population, into its missile program. Iranian expatriates who left with the revolution have been slow to return, but many are now doing so and thus heralding a new age for Iran's missile development program with their tremendous wealth of technical experience. Other missile systems Iran has an arsenal of short-range, liquid-fueled missiles including the Scud-B and Scud-C, and is now able to produce Scud-type missiles on its own, such as the R-17E, a variant of the Russian Scud-B The Aerospace Industries Organization, a subsidiary of Iran's Ministry of Defense, supports the manufacturing process by engaging in Scud missile restoration. Its short-range missile inventory also includes solid-fueled missiles, such as the TONDAR-69 and the Fateh-110. Also, Iranian artillery rockets include the Samad, the Shahin-2 artillery rocket, the Neza artillery rocket, the ZELZAL-1, the ZELZAL-2 and the ZELZAL-3. Topic: Longer range ballistic missiles, 1000 kilometers plus. As of 2009, Iran has an active interest in developing, acquiring, and deploying a broad range of ballistic missiles, as well as developing a space launch capability. In mid-July 2008, Iran launched a number of ballistic missiles during military exercises, reportedly including the medium-range Shahab-3. Iran announced other missile and space launch tests in August and November 2008. 
In February 2009, Iran announced it launched a satellite into orbit and officially achieved a presence in space. Topic: <laughs> Farge 3 MERV The Farge-3 is currently Iran's most advanced ballistic missile. It is a domestically developed liquid fuel missile with an unknown range. What makes it Iran's most advanced rocket is that the Iranian government says it has multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicles capabilities. Its MIRV capability may give it the ability of avoiding anti-missile surface-to-air missiles The missile was last launched during Holy Prophet War Games, which was the IRGC's largest naval war games ever. The Farge 3 and the Farge 3 artillery rocket are different systems. Shahab-3 Shahab-3 was the first intermediate-range ballistic missile that was built by Iran's military. Its first model, also known as Shahab-3A has a range of 1,300 km Soon after Iran came with a new model called Shahab 3B, which has a range of 2,000 km 1,200 miles, and can carry a heavier warhead. Making this missile was a major step in Iran's missile industry, and it opened the way to longer-range missiles. Shahab 3D, which followed the Shahab 3C, is Iran's latest Shahab model. A 2,000 km miles range including Russia as far as Moscow, Ukraine, parts of Hungary, Serbia, Greece, Egypt, Arabia, parts of India and China, as well as countries closer to Iran. Jane's Information Group said in 2006 that Iran had six operational Shahab-3 brigades, the first of which was established in July 2003. They said that the six brigades were mainly equipped with standard variants, but with others described as enhanced Shahab-3 variants, with ranges of 1,300, 1,500, and 2,000 km 810, 930, and 1,240 miles, respectively. Anthony Cordesman at the Center for Strategic and International Studies however said only in August 2007 that the Air Force of the IRGC is believed to operate Iran's three Shahab-3 intermediate range ballistic missiles units while noting that their actual operational status remains uncertain. GHADR-110 The GHADR-110 is a medium-range ballistic missile designed and developed by Iran. The missile has a range of 1,800 to 2,000 km 1,200 miles and as such is the Iranian missile with the longest range. It is believed to be an improved version of the Shahab-3, also known as the GHADR-101. It has a liquid fuel first stage and a solid fuel second stage, which allows it to have a range of 2,000 km. It has a higher maneuverability than the Shahab-3 and a setup time of 30 minutes which is shorter than that of the Shahab-3. Topic. Ashura In November 2007, Iranian Defense Minister Mustafa Mohammad Najjar announced that Iran had built a new missile with a range of 2,000 km 1, miles, the Ashura missile. 
He did not say how the missile differed from the Shahab 3, which has a range of 2,100 km miles. He told the gathering besiege militia during the maneuvers they were holding that same week that the construction of the Ashura missile, with the range of 2,000 km miles, is among the accomplishments of the Defense Ministry." According to Jane's Defense Weekly, the Ashura represents a major breakthrough in Iranian missile technology. It is the first two-stage MRBM using solid-fueled rocket motors instead of the existing liquid-fueled technology used on the Shahab. This would dramatically reduce the setup and deployment time for the missile and hence, shorten the amount of warning time for the enemy. Jaynes noted that while the development parallels Pakistan's Shaheen II MRBM there is no evidence to suggest there had been any prior technology exchange or with its other known technology partners such as North Korea or China. Sejil <inaudible> 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 The new two-stage solid-fuel missile has a range of nearly 2,500 kilometers (1,600 miles). It was tested on the 12th of November 2008. An improved version, the SEJJIL-2, was tested on the 20th of May 2009. Improvements include better navigation system, better targeting system, more payload, longer range, faster lift-off, longer storage time, quicker launch, and lower detection possibilities. Samorg <laughs> U.S. Director of National Intelligence James Clapper told the Senate Armed Services Committee on of February 2014 that Iran was expected to test, "...a missile system that could potentially have ICBM class range." A possible reference to the Samorg satellite launch vehicle SLV on which Iran is working. Ahmad On October 10, 2015, Iran launched a new missile, the Ahmad. The Ahmad is capable of delivering a nuclear weapon and has a range of 1,700 km ca 1,000 miles, enough to reach all of Israel and Saudi Arabia. It is considered to represent a great advance in accuracy, with a guidance and control system in its nose cone that functions during re entry into the atmosphere. As a consequence of Iran's nuclear deal, JCPOA, on 20 July 2015, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2231 was endorsed, replacing the Resolution 1929 which called upon Iran not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons. It has been argued that the language is not a legal prohibition. The U.S. ambassador to the UN Samantha Power said that the Ahmad missile was inherently capable of delivering a nuclear warhead which is therefore a violation. However, Vitaly Cherkin, Russia's ambassador disputed this interpretation. A call is different from a ban, so legally you cannot violate a call, you can comply with a call or you can ignore the call, but you cannot violate a call." Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif, responded by saying that since Iran does not possess nuclear weapons nor does it ever intends in having one, it does not design its missiles to be capable of carrying something it does not have. 
Nevertheless, the testing of the Ahmad missile took place before the adoption of the Resolution 2231. The US, France, Britain, Germany, Sweden, Turkey, and Australia asked the UN Security Council to investigate and take appropriate action. <laughs> 